Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Justin Melson with Happy Fox Productions and today we're going to be looking at how to color correct and color grade inside of Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. And the footage that we're going to be looking at today is from our latest short film, Brawl of the Century. If you guys want to check out that video, the link is in the description below. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at color correcting and color grading this interview footage that we shot for the film. And just so you guys know a little bit of specs about the footage, we shot this on the Blackmagic Cinema camera in uh, 1080p log all that kind of good stuff and in terms of the white balance we had to set at 5600 Kelvin because we had obviously daylight coming in now before we actually go into explaining how to color correct this I just want to explain to you guys how we shot this because that is just as important if not more important so the way we filmed this was we had like I said the Blackmagic Cinema camera and we had a Sigma 18 to 35 lens and Obviously, when you film in front of a window like this, you are going to have some really hot exposure outside. Luckily, the Blackmagic Cinema camera has fairly nice dynamic range. Not even fairly nice. Who am I saying? It's really good. It's really good dynamic range. 13 stops. And with that being said, we only started blowing out this part of the image right here, as you can see on our scopes. But his skin tones are right where they need to be. They're right in the center. And all of this right here is looking really good as well. And the way we did that is, I'm just going to bring up a clip from my Instagram, is as you can see, here's me with the Blackmagic Cinema, and we had a Kino Flow Celeb 200 set to daylight balanced that was acting as a key light form. And essentially what that did is we bumped that up to like 95% because it's an LED light, and that just kind of filled in his face. So in order to expose for the outside and the inside, we had this really bright daylight light matching the same color temperature as the outside, and we blasted that onto his face, hence why it was so, the light was so close to him. And then we also had another light that the camera is blocking, and we had that set to 2800 Kelvin, which is even warmer than tungsten because we wanted to give, you know, like the look that there's a lamp right next to him, you could say, and because why not? Because we just wanted to experiment. So that was, essentially our lighting setup. We have daylight windows all around him, just kind of giving him a backlight, just filling the overall scene. And then if we didn't have this light, he would be a silhouette. So we uh, shot this light onto him as a key, and then we filled him with a really warm light on the side that we just can't see, but it is right here. So with that being said, you can't really see it too well because it is log footage, and log stands for uh, logarithmic, which means it's just flat. All the color information is in there, um, but you know, this is 10-bit footage, 422, but we just have to extract it out. And that's what we're going to be doing inside of Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So for the first thing that I did when I was coloring this is I already knew I'm going to add some saturation just so I can kind of see what we're dealing with. That's usually the first thing that I do. And we're going to be color grading inside of the Lumetri color panel within Premiere Pro because we could obviously go in and start typing curves and hue and saturate, or not hue and saturation, three-way color corrector, tint, and all of that, but since Adobe has the Lumetri color panel built in, which in case of you guys didn't know, you would just hit the color tab up here, we have all of those tools within our scene, which is really, really, I mean, sorry, not within the scene, but within the interface, which is really convenient, really nice. I'm really happy Adobe came out with this. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and add saturation, just so we can see what we are dealing with. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up a little bit for you guys. If you guys hear a cat meowing, that's my cat. So. As you can see, we have really nice daylight light and we have really warm light coming in right here. So let's go ahead and start adding some contrast. I'm probably going to add a slight S-curve, just bright, brighten up his skin tones, darken it, and now we are getting something. Now we can actually see some of the warmth right here in some of this. But this, in my opinion, is a little too contrasty. And again, color correction and color grading is subjective, so it's honestly up to you to decide if you like the look. Some of you guys might say, oh, this is good enough. And some of you guys might say, ew, that's kind of gross. But um, actually, another thing that I was going to discuss to you guys really quick was the aspect ratio. We obviously had this in a 2, 3, 5 to 1 aspect ratio. And I've described this before, but if you want, you could easily throw in. Um, the way you could do it is you could throw on a 2351 CinemaScope aspect ratio PNG image, which you could honestly download this off of Google. You just have to Google it. And there you go. You have it already baked into your shot. But what I like to do is I like to have this as a reference just so we can reframe, decide what we're kind of going for. And then I like to take it out, 
and then I like to change my actual sequence to the two, three, five, one aspect ratio. So for those people that have ultra widescreen monitors, they're not going to get black bars on the top and bottom of their screen. They're actually going to get a full widescreen image. So I'll change this to eight, one, seven, cause that is a uh, two, three, five, one aspect ratio. Then I'll hit okay. And boom, now we have it actually in our settings. So let's go ahead and get back to the color. So we have saturation and we have contrast in our scene, but this is a little bit too much contrast. So I might even, actually we can go into the blacks and I'm just looking at my scope while I do this. We have no crushing, uh, crushing blacks at the moment, which is really nice. Might bring that down. Might even bring the shadows up. Highlights, now let's keep those there. And I'm also looking at the outside because I don't really want this to be blown out white. I mean, which is nothing we can do because it is overexposed, but I would like to gray it out because that is something that film does really well. That's why film is film is because film and its dynamic range rolls off the highlights fairly well, just like in, um, just like an Arri Alexa camera would. So what I like to do is I like to just slowly roll off the highlights just so they're not completely at a hundred percent, which is the same for broadcast work with legal color space. You might want to Whenever I do work for different broadcast companies, I like to make sure the highlights are never at 100% to stay within legal uh, color space boundary. I'm sorry, legal color boundaries. So that looks good to me. Let's just kind of touch up this a little bit. So I'm just kind of going through and I might lower the whites just a little bit. The highlights, maybe bring that down. I just want to be careful with the skin tones because if we bring it down too much, it'll start to make the skin tones a bit muddy looking, which is not what we want because the skin tones are our first priority. We want to make sure those look nice because that is the whole reason that the shot is even alive is because we're interviewing them. We want the skin tones to look nice and then we'll worry about the background. Let me see. Maybe lower the saturation just a little bit. Go into creative. And what I like to do is add the faded film effect. It just kind of rolls the shadows up a little bit. So for example, if we were to darken our sh uh, blacks a lot, like start crushing them, we could see it in his hair, start crushing them, we can go into our faded film and kind of roll them off in a gray way, which is something that I like to do. And then sharpen, we could add it up, sharpen it a little bit. We didn't have a makeup artist on set, so we don't want to just show all of his, uh, you don't want to just show all of his pores and everything, because as much as we like sharp footage, we don't want to do that unless you're going for that. So that looks pretty good. And another thing that we can do is we can go into our curves and we can go into our hue and saturation curve. So if you guys don't know what this does, this essentially, we can decide which colors we want to pop and which colors you want to tone down in terms of saturation. So what that means is if we were to move this all the way up, everything would be heavily saturated. And if we would move this all the way down, everything would be in black and white. And you could see that within our vector scope right here too. And so obviously we have some greens out here, heavy greens, his skin tones are kind of in the yellow orange. His skin tones are always on the flesh tone line right here. So as you can see, we have a bit of yellow, which is where this is coming in. Then we have his actual skin tones, which are probably where this flesh tone line is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is something that I also like to do. And you can see this done in a lot of Zack Snyder films or a lot of films that are very, I don't know, for lack of a better term, I hate to use the word just cinematic, but films that are overly cinematic, a lot of them have a grayed out background or the background is a bit desaturated, which is nice because when you're lighting a scene, sometimes you want your satur uh, I'm sorry, your background to be one or two stops lower than what the subject is. So it just adds a little bit of depth and contrast. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is take all the blues and greens and just kind of move the saturation down a bit. Is if you look right here in our vector scope, you can see that we are taking any blue that's in the shot and we're eradicating it. And let's just go on ahead. Let's see what we got here. Bring that down. So if you guys look at that outside, you're going to see that we're going to start taking away some of the green out there too. If you're going for that kind of look. So as you can see, the background is pretty much black and white at this point, but that's kind of an ugly black and white. We don't want to do that. So we'll just lower that. Bring that in. See, for me, that looks pretty good because it basically makes it look like the window is taking out any kind of contrast that we had outside, which almost um, gives the illusion that you had extra dynamic range and it makes it look more filmic as opposed to a video camera. 
And again, that's just my personal opinion. And now we can look into his skin tones and we could say, okay, this is pretty orange. Now we can go into the oranges and say, let's add some more, make them look kind of Shrekish or take it away. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we can do. So you just gotta be really careful when you mess with the skin tones because that is what people are gonna be looking at the most. I think that looks pretty good, to be honest with you guys. Yeah, you know what, to be honest, that's great, that's great. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so let's bring that back, because obviously that doesn't look too good. I'm just trying to find the the yellows. Okay, so here are the yellows. So we could just bring that back a little bit, unless you want it to be really strong, or you could just bring that back. So now, you can almost see it, but... Now, in my opinion, that looks pretty good. In fact, that looks actually pretty close to what the original film looks like. And if you want to bring a little bit of more uh, focus towards his center, towards the face, if you could add a small vignette, you don't want to make it too much because then people are going to be like, what the heck's going on? Small vignette. And if you really want to get fancy, you can go into the hue, saturation, and luminance secondary panel within Premiere Pro. I personally didn't have to do that for this shot because everything just looked fine the way it is just going going about it the way we did but if you wanted to you could definitely go in and try to key out his skin tones maybe key out some other kind of colors and mess with it that way but we personally don't need to do that we can go here and then we could do some final touches using the three-way color correction panel so we could just maybe decide what you're trying to go for maybe raise the shadows so they're not clipping maybe even lower the skin tones I mean, sorry, the mid-tones, which is kind of the skin tones. The, usually the skin tones live in the mid-tones. Raise the highlights just a little bit. I just don't want them to clip that 100%. That's just what I'm looking at. Okay, so for me personally, that looks pretty good for what I'm going for. I personally like it. I might even bring this down just a little bit more. And let's see, vibrance, we don't really need to mess with that. Everything looks, for me personally, I really like the way it looks. And perfect. So that is the way that we color corrected and color graded inside of Premiere Pro. Hence, I said color correction. We didn't really do too much color correction to, because this shot didn't really need a whole lot of color correction to be done because we weren't, since this is its own standalone shot, we didn't have to do any color matching from this shot to, let's say, another shot. And the white balance I already knew was pretty spot on because we had good lights. And since I'm the one who dp this project, I already knew what I was working with, so I didn't have to to go in and try to gain white balance and all that kind of fun stuff that you have to do when you color correct. So we could just jump right into color grading, which is fun. But I hope you guys definitely learned something from watching this video. Uh, I hope it was able to teach you guys a little bit about color correction and color grading inside of Premiere Pro. And again, like I said, it's all just creative. If you want the shot to be a little warmer, make it just a little bit warmer. If that's the kind of look that you're going for. I personally, that's actually kind of cool, but if we were to do that, I'd maybe lower his skin tones just a little bit but again it's all it's all your own opinion so thank you guys so much for watching please feel free to subscribe to the happy fox productions youtube channel for additional short films and tutorials and projects that we have coming up if you guys would like head on over to my instagram page if you want to follow along we do a lot of filmmaking post-production kind of bts photos thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys next time